Hi, Becky Edwards here, Purpose Driven Motherhood. I just want to share a really cool um, epiphany that I had in my scripture study this morning about a handful of ways that Satan attacks us. What are his tactics? And then what can we do to get rid of him in our, to get, get him out of our presence? And um, this is in Moses chapter one. I My scripture study today actually was about a... Um, something I've noticed with different clients and with myself and and that that is there's like a two-part formula to be an unstoppable tool in the Lord's hands and the two parts are one when we receive God's will we receive his power to do it so we've got to get clear on what Heavenly Father wants us to be doing what do we feel called to do what what are the solutions he's having us you know for whatever it is in our lives whether it's as a parent in a business whatever it is when we receive God's will, we receive his power. Then over here, we need to learn to manage our thoughts and emotions because we can get in the way of ourselves over and over and over of being a tool in God's hands. And that's what my scripture study was this morning. I looked at fear in the uh, index and I have a big list of scriptures where people's fear kept them from being a tool in God's hands or it kept them from receiving certain blessings or the window of opportunity passed them by because of fear. So then um, my last scripture that I landed on was Moses chapter one, which is where uh, Jehovah, which is the Christ of the Old Testament, comes and visits Moses face to face. How amazing is that? Isn't that awesome? And and he gives him this like, Moses, you are the, you are a son of God. and and you ha we have a mission for you and we're gonna help you perform it and just all this wonderful, um, uh, you know, truth and light. <laughs> Shows him a vision, all this. Then he left and Moses was like, Ugh. Like, like being in the presence of the Son of God really weakened him. It said many hours it took for him to gain, get his strength back. And then Satan comes. And here are the different tactics I see with, in a story. The first one is Moses attacks our identity. Not Moses. <laughs> Satan. Satan attacks our identity. That's the very first thing he said. Satan, son of man. God, Jesus had just said, Moses, you're a son of God. And then Satan said, son of man. So attacks our identity. The second one is he distracts us. He distracts us. So Moses had been told by God, worship me by Jesus. And then over here, Satan's like, no, 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 worship me. <laughs> he distracts us. He tries to get us to focus on other things, anything other than God, anything other than our divine path, anything other than our divine potential. Just get us distracted. Worship me. Look at me. Follow me. Come over here. Look at this. The third one I notice of his tactics is deception. In this story, he actually, in verse 20, this is Moses chapter 1, in verse, uh, let me see, 19, he he just lies. He lies right out and says, well, I am the only begotten son. <laughs> Moses is like, I can tell the difference. Why are you saying this? He is deceiving. He is the father of lies. We do not have to believe him. The fourth one is anger. He got so mad because Moses kept refusing to worship him. And he's like, I can tell the difference. You're not the son of God or you're not the only begotten. I mean, everybody's a child of God, but you are not who you say you are. I'm not going to worship you. And then he tried to get rid of him several times. And Moses or Satan is just like getting madder and madder to the point where he said, he cried with a loud voice and ranted upon the earth and commanded saying, I'm the only begotten. And he's just, he's using anger. Then he goes right into creating fear. That's the next one. Fear in Moses in that same verse 19. And Moses began to fear exceedingly. And as, as he began to fear, he saw the bitterness of hell. <gasps> okay, so we've got attack Satan attacks our identity he distracts us he deceives he uses anger and fear and and then um, the last one I'm gonna add a sixth one actually is he tends to attack when we're weak or where we are weak what he knows our weak areas and he knows our weak moments so right here Moses had been weakened physically weakened by having an amazing face-to-face -face, uh, experience with the Savior so he was like <sighs> exhausted. His physical strength was exhausted. And then Satan comes in when he is weak. Now, those are six awesome tactics that we can be aware of. They're not awesome, but it's awesome that we can be aware of them. <laughs> tactics of the devil. 
that we can watch for and go, oh, I know what's going on. I know how to handle this. Now let's look at the solution. How do we get rid of him? This is a powerful story. Um, I, I don't have a direct quote because it's, it's, it's not that nature, but I will say that when my husband was a brand new bishop, uh, probably about seven years ago, um, he was trained in a, in a area training in our, in our county by uh, President Packer, Elder Anderson, and a couple of 70s from the general authorities. And they were trained. The one thing I remember from this meeting, because I've repeated it a lot of times, is President Packer said, teach your members to cast out Satan like Moses did. Ooh, that is the president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles saying, we can follow the same pattern Moses used. And if you look for the pattern in here, Moses tried three different times to cast him out. He said, get thee hence, Satan, deceive me not. And then he quoted something God had said. God said, thou art after the only be the similitude of thy only begotten. So he, he like tries to get him to leave and he quotes truth, which is awesome. I think that helped him hold his ground because truth has a lot of power and light in it. I think it helped him like, oh, I'm staying strong. But then he wouldn't leave over and over and over. He wouldn't leave. So first time in, yeah, and then the second time, depart hence, Satan. Third time, depart from me, Satan. And then finally, after three different tries, finally Moses said, in the name of the only begotten, depart hence, Satan. <sighs> and then Satan finally left. So when the president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles told our bishops and our stake leaders, teach your members to cast out Satan like Moses did, this is an awesome pattern. We've got it right here in our scriptures. Moses chapter one. Study that. It's a powerful, powerful uh, chapter. And you know what's awesome? After Moses passed that rigorous, excruciating test, then Christ came back and he gave him even bigger blessings than before. <laughs> and I know that that is often how God works, is that we are, this is part of the plan, you guys. It's part of the plan that the devil and his minions are given some freedom to work on us because that engages our agency, our ability to choose. Our ability to choose is so precious to God because it grows us. If we were just robots and had no choices, we couldn't grow like this. But it is part of our growth in becoming like God is to have these opposition uh, forces, these good and bad and light and dark and Christ and devil and his minions. And and the, the Christ has angels over here and the devil has his minions over here. And that, the um, you know, the little devil and angel um, cartoons that you see, that's not just a cartoon. Like there's a lot of real realism to that. In uh, Moroni chapter seven, we're told that, that God continually entices us to do good and Satan continually entices us to do evil. So that little cartoon, there, there's a lot of truth to that. It's a real truth. It's a real concept that really happens to us. We are continually enticed by both sides to choose good or to choose evil. But here's the cool thing. We know how to get him out of our presence. We don't have to just put up with him being here. And I love that we learned that pattern. Um, I know that, that sometimes we, um, I, I think, I don't know that I knew much about this concept of getting rid of Satan when I was growing up. But I had heard of people um, using a priesthood blessing to cast out an evil spirit, and, and that's totally legit and real and awesome. But that doesn't help a woman or a child when they don't have a priesthood holder around. So this story is awesome because it gives us the knowledge that a woman or a child who does not hold the priesthood has the power to call on Christ's name. And Christ's name is so powerful. And we can get rid of him in our lives. So hooray, hooray for opposition, hooray for growth, and hooray that we can see the enemy's tactics here in this chapter, and we know how to beat him. Have a fantastic day. Love you guys.